Hello everybody, welcome to Fruitful Trees, and today I'm at a place that's very fruitful. I was at uh, a lady's house previously, her name was Jen, and she had a food forest DYI. She taught people how to do their own food forest. And we're up here in Jupiter, Florida, and there's a whole bunch of friends that she has and clients that she has that she's helping them turn their place into food forest. And so uh, several of the places uh, are place she wants me to come visit, and I'm so glad I got to visit this place today. And we're going to go around and we're going to uh, meet the lady here that owns the house. And we're going to see what she's got growing on. She's been growing here about between 10 to 15 years, all her trees. And on Frank Ken, another person who was just previously, I did a video at his house. He came and he's a great landscaper and he cut down uh, many of the trees. Not cut them out, but just trimmed them, gave them a haircut so they look great. But we're going to look around here today and see... Uh, some of the great work Ken did and also some of the great trees that are growing in the ground and hear about how they're growing and we'll come back in the summer and see then. But I just want to give you another idea about landscaping, about how you can do it. Hopefully from these videos, you're getting some ideas. We're going to go meet the owner now and we're going to check out what she has growing on here. Okay, everybody, here we are in this property in Jupiter, Florida. And this is our friend Sue Ann. Hi. <laughs> and Sue Ann's going to show us around her fruit trees. So how big is your property here? It's an acre and a quarter. And uh, how long have you been here? I've been here since 1989. And when you were here, was there any fruit trees at all here? This used to be nothing. My, my daughter's horse pasture. So okay. I have pictures of nothing but sand. <laughs> and did you stop planting fruit trees right away? Or was it just nope. how long? I started this in 2011. It was my goal to become more self-productive. Um, the world was changing rapidly, and I just wanted to be more of a homesteader, eat healthier, um, propagate, and, and truthfully, it's my therapy. <laughs> me walking around here playing in the dirt is therapy to and me. And did you self-teach yourself, or did you have experience with all this? Um, I pretty much self-taught, and just by learning trial and error, at the beginning, my husband and I, for like the first three years, went to the Rare Fruit Council every month and learned a lot from there. So the Rare Fruit Council is a great uh, source. Now out here in the farms, we have lots of people. We have Amanda Pike and Jennifer Tritz, and a lot of us out here are food forest, and we trade, we cut, we, we give each other's ideas, and I think that's the best. I have over here some stuff started. Okay. Um, I've got a bunch of dragon fruit, and this is a jackfruit, a bunch of jackfruit seedlings. So where'd you get the dragon fruit uh, starters from? Um, do you have a dragon fruit tree or is it from I do people? have a dragon fruit that's producing that I've cut a couple off, off of. I've gotten some from the Rare Fruit Council fruit sales. I've gotten from other people and I just collect them and propagate them and then I'll put them in the yard and repropagate them. Same with aloes and jackfruit. And I give these away. I mean, if you want an aloe, you want a jackfruit, you want a, so, uh, what you kind may of have jackfruit one. What seedlings are these? <laughs> um, I've got four jackfruits on the property, so I can't tell you. Um, I do believe this one is from the J31, though, because this was my first jackfruit that ever seeded, and that's the last one I have there. These one down here are from the one far in the back, and those jackfruits get about that big. They are huge. You know what kind they are? are no. They okay from the it seedling? was a seedling oh, also, okay. and it was from the Rare Fruit Council. And I see you have a pond here. Is that your pond? This is our pond. Is it man-made, or was it, it here? When we built the house, it was man-made. <laughs> this is my son, Brandon. Hi, Brandon. How are you doing? Good. Uh, you, uh, I'm doing a tour so you can go back in the house, go get some coffee, okay? Okay. Um, we do, this was man-made when we built the house for the foundation. Now it's kind of see where all the chickens are. That's all their area. Okay. And then this little area from here to here is a tortoise enclosure. If you look over here, I have an African spur thigh. See oh, wow. him right there? Wow. And he's kind of hungered out and it's kind of cold for him. Um, there's some lettuce here, and that's been there since yesterday. He hasn't moved because it's so cold. Got so, you. so he'll come get his stuff. All right. There. So this is your little area. Where this you is my play it. area. Okay. I have my thing here, and I got some um, my flowers, orchids, and stuff behind me. Here is a very interesting tree. Um, this is a. This is from. Uh, I like I like the way you you label the trees. It's a lemon drop mangosteen, Garcinia radia. And I got this from Gene Joiner's Unbelievable Acres yes. in West Palm. When I put this in the ground, it was 
this big. I mean, that big in 2011. Last year we had our best crop. This thing was like a Christmas tree of yellow flowers. It was gorgeous. And when does it, I've got uh, pardon us starters. everybody, the big truck's coming by, but <laughs> uh, when does it uh, usually fruit? Um, it just finished about two months ago, so um, late summer, I would say, late fall. I've so, got a few starters here. They're very hard to start. These three here are Garcinia's, Garcinia Redia. And like I said, when I put mine in the ground, this is how I bought it, that big right there. And how many years ago was that? This would have been like 2012, 2013. So about 10 years it took to get this tall. Yes. Do you ever cut this tree back? Yes, I do. And actually- and That's a loud garbage I, truck. It is. <laughs> <laughs> I actually am getting ready to prune it because it just finished all its harvest in, so I'm gonna give it a So prune. wait, so wait, so let's wait for the truck to pass. Okay. <laughs> because we have a nice quiet day with no wind, but a loud truck, okay. So this tree is uh, really beautiful. So. It's been in the ground 10 years and you say you cut it back every year? Yes, I do. I'm going to I'm getting ready to do it um in the next week or so because it just finished rooting about a month ago and that's usually when I prune my trees is pretty much after harvest. And as you cut it back every year, do you think keeping I'm just going to nip it like But keeping this tree small doesn't affect the fruit on this particular Oh, tree. no, not at all. If so, anything, it's really really enchanted it. So this tree just gets loaded. Yep, loaded. Okay. Lemon um, mangosteen. And I had a hard time propagating it. After 10 years, I finally figured it out. And it is by the seed. The trick is it takes a long time for that seed to pop up. So don't okay. think you're going to get a, a fruit come up in a long time. I found these at, over in the thing, planted them like months and months and months and months ago. All of a sudden, they popped up. So all the fruit you had, you only planted three of them? Of what? The seedling of the lemon mangosteen? Um, that's all that came up. They're oh, hard to, yeah, up. yeah, okay. they're hard. This is all an right. Indian, I mean, yeah, a jujube right here. I just had it pruned down because that's that, okay. This thing took over this whole canopy. Yeah, this grows really big. Um, so I'm not sure if it's going to come back the best. This is cotton. Well, that's a big uh, trunk for the jujube. How old is the jujube tree? Uh, 2011. And you get a bunch on there, right? Oh, yeah. And yeah. they're so good. Crisp. Yes. Crisp, crisp. They're about that big around. Yes. This now, is cotton. Okay. Oh, wow. You got cotton. Yeah. Here. See, right here. Oh, cotton. very cool. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So, some seeds. Uh, I'm good. Thank you. So, <laughs> let me ask you. So, you planted, when you initially planted, you planted the lemon mangosteen and uh -huh. the jujube pretty close together. Yep. On purpose? Or did you not know anything? Or did you, do you think um, that's fine? At the time, if you come out here, you can see my, my, I kind of did rows about, I would take actually my, my rake and go over twice. So we've got a carry, Russell avocado, rosy gold mango, Marcus pumpkin avocado. This thing, now all these trees have been pruned and I'm talking probably two thirds. I had Ken Stevens come and give all my trees a haircut and oh it looks so pretty these things if you you couldn't even see the ground a few months ago ken did a wonderful job he pruned all my trees beautifully and they're all coming back nicely okay but this marcus pumpkin these avocados are about that big around huge beautiful and this was planted in 12. this is from lychee nursery okay how do you how, how do you like the marcus pumpkin it, it's one of my my favorite is the Russell, but probably right after the Russell is Marcus. Okay, now I see there's some pine trees in there behind there that are really, really tall. This so, was naturally on our property. I have cut down trees to put in fruit trees, um, but the outer skirts I pretty much so, left for windbreaker and the barrier. So the outside has a lot of pine. Okay, now with the shade from the pine trees, it doesn't bother the avocado no, no, tree or no, the fruit no. trees at all. Oh no, you should have seen that. This thing was loaded here. Loaded. It gets a lot of sun, believe it or not, through those pines. Now you can keep it this small and it'll grow like every year. Is that your goal to keep it this size? Oh yeah. All my trees I want probably 25. Now I see you have no fence on the edge of your yard here and your neighbors are right there. Did they mess with your fruit at all? Oh, not at all. No, no. Very good neighbors. I love them. I am going to put up a living fence and I'm going to show you that how I'm going to do okay, that. Okay. So what's this bit. tree here? This is an abbey. 
Oh, wow. Um, wow. Now, they told me I couldn't grow wow. it here. Wow, look at that. And I said, well, I'm going to try because they also told me that with jackfruit years ago, and I've got four that are, like, off the chain. Um, I did have Ken cop this, too. This was probably three times the size of this. I just wow. had him crop it to see um, if we could get some... Um, better now, it, it grows, it's split, but that's still, it looks like two trees, but it's one tree. It right? is, yes, one. It's split. And right have you gotten fruit on this? Not yet. Not yet. It tries, it gets out the flowers, but I have not gotten the fruit. And so that's why I had Ken chop the top off and see if we could do something. Okay. Um, I'm going to try some different fertilizers and stuff um, also suggest. Now, do you water your trees at all? On, on... I used to when I first, you know, had them in the ground. They're this big and I would stay out here and spray and pray and water, water and pray and that's my it, like i said great, this yeah. is my therapy exactly um and i would just come out here and just you know water all the time now i don't have to it's all self-watered okay. of course my starters over there all so long let's see stuff. here so now what tree is this one now you said this, this is, is a rosy gold that is a big tall rosy gold tree. this thing was like i said i love how ken copied all this rosy gold um is from southeast asian and uno mix I like early the early multi harvest. Does the rain ever mess? Do you have Bright to replace yellow. these every now and then? Or? Yeah, these are from the dollar store and zip ties from the dollar store and a, a, a permanent marker. And it's not for me. I pretty much know my trees, but people like to walk around yeah. and look in stuff. And like the, that. how often do you change them from the rain and stuff? A couple of years? Oh, maybe? yeah. And then you got to watch also, you don't want. Um, I couldn't find my grafting tape. I like to use grafting tape instead of zip ties. This is zip ties are easier, but grafting tape, you don't have to worry yes, about them. Yes. Um, so tell me about the rosy gold. Do you love the rosy gold? Yes. Gorgeous, beautiful. It's kind of got, um, it's very smooth. My favorite, Malika is my favorite mango. So up let's front. go here. Well, oh, let's, let's. Okay, let's go around here. this These way. Are my three there's a lychee here, a Marcus, my husband air layered from the lychee. Um, oh, wow. So this is down in West Palm. And you cut that back? No, when when I get did all my pruning, Ken said it was not time to do the lychees. So the three lychees and my two star fruit are the last of my trees I need pruning. Okay. But these three lychees have not been pruned. They will be after harvest. Okay. And, and no problems with the mite up here? Uh, not that I know of. That's okay. a Brewster. That's from um, Eddie O'Berry's farm. That's an air layering from O'Berry's lychee tree. My husband air layered that, a Marquise. Oh, this one is a beautiful tree. Alana Zapadilla. Wow. There, it is loaded. Let me see. Here we go. The one up front's got a lot more. Than, but this will have lots of Zapadilla. Okay, so we have Alana. How old is this tree? Oh, here's a bunch of fruit on this side. Um, this one, let me see if I have it marked. Zapadilla Alana from Thailand in 2011. Okay. Very nice. Okay. Some nice size fruit up here. So we have um, your three leeches and you have your sapodi and they're pretty close together too. Yes, yes. Maybe about 20 feet apart mm -hmm. there. Now see these two I left up here and uh -huh. that's, this is a goal this week. I'm going to put those wraps in. I'm going to air layer that okay. and that. So I left a gap when we, when we trimmed it, I left those two. But you could have cut those and still I could have cut them when I trim these. But I left those two so that I could put air layers on them. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, another lychee. This was loaded. This is a um, Bailey's Marvel. Wow. And where's my tag on her? <laughs> wow. He cut this tree very nice. Yes, very nice. Isn't it beautiful? And Ken's been on the show before and showed us his trees. He's great. Uh, he knows a lot about the trees. And uh... this is a Bailey's Marvel fiberless. This is from Pine Island originally. Uh -huh. It's a cross between a Hayden and a Bombay. Fibrous, tangy, yet sweet. <laughs> yes, this is an excellent one. I like this one. And do you, now, do you fertilize your trees at all? Uh, yes, I do. I use a regular palm, 10, 10, 10, and Epsom salt. How often? Once a year, maybe? Yeah, if I'm lucky. <laughs> and do you, do you spray your trees at all? Nothing. That's one thing. I, there is no chemicals whatsoever anywhere on this property. Okay. Um, and this tree's loaded every year? Yep. No, um, this one's actually pretty finicky. Um, when we had a hurricane a few years back, it brunched a big branch off of it, 
And once it did that, it started fr uh, fruiting a lot. And then all of a sudden, we didn't get really many any mangoes last year on any of them. The only mangoes we got was the Malika and the Kerry last year. The Malika okay. was off the chain. That's my favorite. I've got some uh, yucca sugar cane and a few things over here. I was starting a planter, haven't gotten to it. This is a red mammon that came down in the hurricane. If you look at this trunk, this thing was beautiful. My kids, my grandkids would sit under here eating the red mambins. I've given clippings to half of Jupiter Farms of this. This is a tree. You can make a bush. You can make it a, a, a tree. But every year around August, you will have beautiful fruits on it and just eat them right off the tree. What do they taste like? Um, kind of like a plum. They've got a big seed in them. They're definitely nothing you can, I made jelly off them once, but they're nothing that you can cook or anything. It's just a definite eat off the tree kind of a, a, of a fruit. This is a Namdak Mai. Beautiful. Great size. Ken, this, I get real good fruit. Ken, if you're watching, you did a great job. On it did me? Yeah. I would look out the window and my smile would get bigger and bigger. So the this tree was would... once big, I assume. Oh, it, all of these trees. I had a knee surgery and then I had a hernia surgery. So I let a lot of stuff get off the chain and I did not keep up with it. So Ken did me right. He gave me the haircut they needed. So this, <laughs> look uh, how beautiful that this is. This Namdak Mai is loaded every year, you uh -huh. say. Oh yeah, this one, my, this, I believe this one's actually sometimes twice a year wow look at look in the in the canopy in here how yeah it's you so it. beautiful and this is the way you do it folks yep. you leave the middle open as much as possible so it's it doesn't gorgeous it has air to circulate great job ken All this right. is my prize mango i'm not mango i'm sorry my prize jackfruit, jackfruit this is yes. the one that gives me jackfruits like this big and it's a seedling huge i mean you will find four to five of these things hanging. You just don't know how they hang up there. There's none. I looked in here the other day. I have, I've seen some, I dropped my glasses all the time. I've seen a couple um, flowers, but I haven't seen any buds out front. I have And does it give a lot of fruit? Yes. This one will give about seven to eight fruit a year. And you keep it a nice small size. I just first time cutting it. I had um, Ken cut it. For and me. again, we look how close it is to these other trees. Yep. When this tree was big, was it going like right into the other trees? Yeah, this is a neighbor's tree and it's kind of coming over because of the sun. Uh -huh. um, so it is kind of intrusing a little bit, but that's part of life and nature and it'll it'll be OK. Now that I've cut it down, I want this cut down anyway. Work. I don't want it. It was growing straight up. All right, everybody. I pray that you're enjoying this video, but we're going to take a break in the action here because a lot of times I do the research to find out where these these yards are and to go and film these. But uh, I also learned from previous people I went to their houses. And one of the places I went to was a great place. We visited Jen and she has DYI, your own build your own food forest. And uh, she has given me a list of people to go to. And this property was one of those lists. So I want to have her come on here um, now. I would love to help anybody who needs help building a food forest in South Florida. I've been working at it for years, done thousands of hours of research and spent lots of money and can help people kind of avoid the basic pitfalls and get started. And tell us your website. Sure. It's uh, foodforestdiy.com. And I'll put that link below. Thank you so much. You got it. All right, everybody. I wanted to give a shout out to Jen because she is one of the reasons I'm here today. She told me about this property. And uh, so... Thank you, Jen, and I'll put her link below the video and also a link to the video I did with her at her place. Now back to the yard. Uh -huh. There's a whole big open space here. I see there's a playground for- Yes. Uh, but so, like with your love for fruit trees, this open space, which is beautiful and fine, but do you ever say, I'm gonna fit more trees there? Uh, yes, except for last year, we if you, if you can see the circle, we had our above ground pool here um, so this it was our play area. We had an above ground pool. The, my grandkids um, play here. And truthfully, I have planted, if you can see this row, I have planted plants right here in this row. I've planted a Jakarta mango. I planted a couple citrus. I think there was a blood orange citrus. Well, I can't do any citrus for Kalamundan anyway. But um, all kinds of stuff and for some reason something won't grow here so i don't know what it is i have another spot that they won't grow okay this here used to be here 
I moved it over here because I have put so many plants in this spot and every tree, no matter what I put in there, dies. I don't know why. So I'm not going to put another plant. So yeah, no, this is kind of the kids' is play that a, area. Is that a loquat? This is a wolf loquat. Okay. A wolf. And that was cut back big time as well? I just trim it. Okay. And it, you can see it's getting ready to give us a bunch of fruit on it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. This is sugar cane. And, excuse me, this is what I'm going to make my living fence out of. So I'm growing this to grow it. So I'm going to take these sugar dots, and every nymph here will be another one that comes up straight. I'm going to start planting them from those poles straight across all the way. So it'll be sugar cane nice, coming straight nice, up. It'll be sugary. a living fence. So I'm growing this to make a living fence. <laughs> Very cool. Oh, this is cool. This is a Wilson seedless. An avocado Wilson seedless. Let me take the sign. Okay. <laughs> um, 4911, I put it in. And this was from Wilson Peponel. The reason it's a seedless is Excalibur, I guess, had Wilson tree and the hurricane knocked it down. So they cut it to the stump. And when it grew back, it started growing the Wilson avocado and next to every Wilson avocado, a little puke avocado, long and skinny. And that's what this thing does. It is the, and it has no seed in the puke one. Wow. And it is, the, it's just like a novelty, but it's really cool. Um, the problem was I was getting some stones in it, some calcium stones in the big Wilson. Um, so I had Ken cut it down and we're going to try to boost it back up. Okay. We've got um, some coconut palms. Now, did you put the coconut grass. palms there? Yes, I planted all these from seed. Now, those coconuts, these are from seed. They're, 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 they shade everything out. You're okay with that? Yeah, because I can trim them up, and they're going to get I mean, they're gonna get high, and they're just going to be a canopy. Okay. Have you ever gone to Unbe Un Unbelievable yes. Acres? Oh, yeah. Okay, that was nothing but canopy. Yes. You can grow in canopy. This is Grumachiyama, or Brazilian cherry. So, so good. Another one my kids and grandkids. Do you get up. any worms in the berries sometimes? Mm, no. If I notice, they're gone. I mean, we yeah. ate them. Yes. <laughs> um, I don't think they last long enough here. When my kids and grandkids know that these are in bloom, they are gone faster than they absolutely love the Guma Chama. Yeah, it's great. Are we done going that way or are we going to see your star fruit? Oh, you want to see the star fruit? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I know you said you had two, right? Yes, we have two. We have an Arkin and a Carrie. Okay. Um, the Arkin isn't doing as well. This Arcan. is the Arkin. I had trouble with white fly because I had a papaya over here. It's dead, and I'm glad because this strawberry papaya brought in so much white fly. And now that it's gone, I'm getting rid of the white fly. It was bringing in all kinds of stuff. So it kind of affected some of the leaves on here, as you can see. And I don't spray. So, <laughs> But this one is loaded with beautiful fruit. This one's a little sweeter. And this one here. This is the carry. This a carry is never ending. If you yeah. look up at some of, look at this here right here. <laughs> yeah, it's always, always several times a year. It's amazing. Never ending. Now you said the arc is sweeter than the carry. I think so. Oh wow! Okay. That's uh, because carry super sweet. All right. So you want to? I guess you we're will, here. We'll go back we can there. go. We can go back around this way. All okay. right. We'll go back. Oh, wait. This is a guava strawberry. Yeah, the catatli, catatli. That's a guava. That's a beautiful strawberry tree. Guava, what a beautiful catli. tree. Um, and I keep it like a tree instead of a big bush. So I've trimmed the underneath and kept it nice. This used to be my tortoise enclosure, so I had it here because when they fell down, the tortoise could eat them. Um, now I just pick them up. Now, is each one of those a seed, or is it all one no, tree? No, this was one plant I planted. Wow. So one okay. tree. This is a... Um, it's an avocado, and it's a Catalina. Oh, wonderful. I, I love it. Don't you like them? Catalina. What I like about this is it's late season. When everything else is done, there'll still be a few Catalinas ready it's to be It's actually picked. a mid-season. Is it? Yeah. Mine are late. These... Now's late. There's nothing on here now. No, no. 
no, they're they're it's late for you because you don't have any later ones. Yeah. But this is a great avocado. Yes, it is. And you keep it a nice size. Did you cut this one back from recently? Oh yeah, see, look. It was much taller. Oh huh? yeah, tall and a little lankier. I think we skipped the Russell. This is my favorite. Okay. I just started this planter. I start little planters. As you see, I got some cardboard over there. I'll put cardboard down, then I'll put mulch on. Then I'll throw some plants up. I've got longevity spinach, which I love. Um, cranberry hibiscus. There's some beauty berry. This is a bika. And that longevity spinach will cover up over here. And then I'll outline it. I'm getting ready to prune some of the bananas. And I'll use the uh, bananas as an outline to kind of keep my chickens from getting it. But this is my favorite of all of my avocado. It's a Russell. It's the kind that looks like a teardrop. It's got the big fat bottom and a long neck. I've had them, I know they had to be nine to 12. Nine, I, they were huge. I have pictures of them inside with my son, Brandon. Wow. But these things, this is from avocado. I mean, this avocado is from Isla Mirada. It's a West Indian variety. Russell avocado. Yeah, wow. Russell, my favorite. And you cut that tree back as well. Yes. So, wow, that's great, wow. Yeah. All right, and then the yesterday, today, and tomorrow. You see those? What's that? The flowers? Yeah, it's called uh, Grandiflora brunsfusia, or yesterday, today, and tomorrow, and it has purple, lavender, and white flowers that change from uh, every day. They'll change a different color, so you wow. always have those. Um. My bananas are out here. So tell us about your bananas. What kind of bananas do you have? I have a list of all the ones that were put in the ground. I can't tell you what they are now. And what's funny is when um, I was cleaning some out, I found this mango <laughs> that wow. was hidden. Look at the size of this. It wow. was hidden in my bank. <laughs> okay, Did you just so, cut it back as well? Yeah, Ken cut that for me. So, um, So what I'm doing is... As they die, I'm getting all the pups out now and I'm weeding these bananas out of here so that that mango can flourish. My guess is it could have been in that spot I was telling you about and it was doing bad. So I moved it over here next to this fence line, uh -huh. planted a few bananas, the bananas overtook. And 10 years later, I find there's a, a, a avocado, I mean, a mango wow. tree. This is a canistel egg fruit. We got our first fruit last year. Wow. They also told me I couldn't do this. Raw sapote. Yes. Yep. That's they, a raw sapote. They said that I could not do it in Jupiter, that it was too far up. And I tested the limits and we got our first fruit last year. How'd you like it? Very good. Yeah. It's like um, custard almost. Yes. We got some dragon fruit here. We got some fruit off of it. I would love to send you some pictures of the mangoes off of this Malika last year. Wow. This was like raindrops. Please do. Please and Ken, Ken trimmed this beautifully. He did. I, I love it. He just opened it up. But I will show you, I will send you pictures. So was it this was tree raining. bigger than the house? It, it was taller. And that was kind of my goal. I thought, okay, I'll, I'll come off my bedroom and I'll pick a mango. But no, I need it like this. It's beautiful. The inside is open. This was a big, huge tree. Everybody, that is the way you trim a mango. Yes. And, and Ken's a wonderful garden here in South Florida. I've been to his house. And so there it is. You see that you keep the open clear and you let it spread out and keep it low. This is a great, great job. Ken did great. Okay. Yeah, I would highly recommend him. Yeah. This is my first jackfruit seedling. It's even got a jackfruit on it right now. Oh, wow. Check that out. <laughs> oh, nice. And let me see. I've got some miracle fruit, calamundin. I keep them up there. I, I cannot grow any citrus here. I'm, I'm not sure why. I think other Jupiter farmers have the same problem. Um, the only citrus I can grow is calamundin, and if I have a couple limes but even that's not doing good. Uh, prickly pear right there. Okay. Oh, I'm gonna show you my vanilla I have up here. This thing is huge and you can see it's wrapped all up wow, in here. that's cool. 
I've this That's I gave cool. Jen like about a, a three foot section um, right here. Vanilla Pandaflora. It flowers. I've tried self pollinating it. Another yesterday, today, and tomorrow. That is very cool. Um, this is a day avocado. This thing is off the chain too. So I just planted one. I oh, haven't tasted them love yet. It. They're amazing. You're gonna love it. You, yes. You're gonna love it. It's it. They're one size, so they're like you can eat them in a sitting. Yes. And they ripen on the table. They're just excellent. Stay on the tree a lot, a long time. Also, these seem to stay on a long time. Day avocado. Okay. I've got a bunch of coconuts out front, and then a oh, moringa, miracle tree. Yep, gotta have moringa. I walk by and just eat it. <laughs> This mango here is also a very winner. Harry. Yep. Highly recommend this mango. If I was going to recommend a mango to anybody, I would recommend the Malika and the Carrie. Well, the thing is, some people love the Carrie, but some people don't. Uh, so they should taste it first. Yeah. <laughs> the Malika and the Carrie are my favorites here. And then the avocados would be the Russell and Marcus Pumpkin. And I do like the day, too. Yes, <laughs> yes. This behind you, there's a coconut here, but here if it, if there's a coconut car, there. That's a small coconut that grows pretty small. Yeah, these I have a couple minis, and these are um. This is another jackfruit. Do you know what kind that is? Is that another NS1? I want to say okay, yeah, okay. NS1. And there's a few bananas popping through there in front of the thing. That's us. Another sapodilla. Another sapodilla. And I bought this in a pot and it didn't have a name. It was one of those old time nurseries where things were just kind of left. <laughs> I got a wonderful price on it, but I do not know the brand and I didn't care because look at the fruit. <laughs> yeah. That's a great spot too. All right. Strawberry tree. Strawberry tree. Yes. Which is another one of the kids favorites because you can always come. Right now there is no strawberries, but there usually is. This jackfruit here was off the chain and it was funny cause I didn't even know there was fruit on it. And I was trimming my Mexican sunflower for um, nitrogen and stuff. So I said, well, let me throw some around here and around the strawberry tree. And I went to throw them around and my eyes went like this and there was like four jackfruits right here. You can see the stems. Look at the size of the stem. Four jackfruits. Is this another seedling? Right here. That's a stem there hanging off yeah, of. Is that a seedling? Yes, another okay. seedling. I'm pretty nice. sure. I don't know if I got this marked or not. Uh, an old lime, like I said, I wasted so much money on citrus. So what was here? This was, <laughs> these were five pine trees that I cut down so oh, that great. I could have more no room. You do have a lot of more room here. Are you not allowed to plant outside your fence? I am. This is a very low area here. When it rains, this swale here will get wet. Okay. So anything I plant here has to like wet feet. Now, when um, you see your neighbor's beautiful house there, you see that empty lawn. Does it drive you crazy that they have? <laughs> it's beautiful, but do you look like, wow, that could be plant so many fruit trees there. I've given them plants. <laughs> okay. It's like such a nice house, but it's just a... Uh, whole big empty lawn yep, there. I know. To me, that's a landscape, right? Yes. Like like an empty canvas. Um, red mombins. Red mombins. These will be a hedge during the summer, so it kind of blocks out all this. And an extra bonus of fruit. The hurricane kind of knocked a couple of them over, so they're kind of sideways. But it doesn't matter. They'll grow up, and they'll fruit. And it'll be a fun little place in there for the kids. This I just, this is new. My, I'm having a hard time finding new stuff. And this is a rose apple. Okay. Rose apple, yes. Rose apple. Now, when you say you're having a hard time finding new stuff, what do you mean? I like to find things I don't have. Well, you don't have a lot. I mean, you have a lot, but there's a lot you don't. I know, but there's, but there is stuff that, I mean, like what? What do I need? What, tell me what I can get. Oh, you can get persimmon. I've had them. They didn't last. You can get peanut butter fruit. You have I have that. that. Oh, you have that? Yeah. Let's see. Uh, white sapote? Uh, no, but I have a big old black chocolate <laughs> pudding fruit. 
Oh, you did. We passed it. Oh yeah, it's oh, up. Yeah. It's up. It's in the front of the pond area. Okay, so you got a box of pote yeah. there. But there's a lot. I mean, we can uh, go through that. But uh, this is uh, beautiful. What you do have. So you got the rose apple. Yep. How new is that? Uh, we got it up at the Hope Sound Flea Market. I have up there like a, probably two years ago, okay. year and a half ago. It's got some nice. I just trimmed it, so it's got some nice little uh, new growth coming out. Oh, nice. I, I like to prune my trees when they're small like that and, and get them bushy. Now this is a chaya, right? No, this is Mexican sunflower. Oh, okay, Mexican sunflower. You look sunflower. up here, you can see the sunflowers. Oh, there you go. And I use this as a chop and drop. I I will cut this down to nothing, and then I'll spread it around on some trees for nitrogen fixing. Here's my chaya. There's your chaya. <laughs> they look. The leaves look the same. Yeah, kind of. But yeah, this is great. Um, as you can see on my tag, it yep. says cook before cook eating. Before eating. Uh -huh. um, and then I've got some uh, coconut palms. This is one of those small coconut palms. You don't have to go eight foot in the air to get your coconut. Yeah, that's wonderful. Isn't that cool? I'm getting ready to cut some of these down too, though. I mean, just like the bottom five branches. Um, I'm just starting here. This is my septic tank, so I cannot plant okay. on here. Okay, okay. And so that's, this is. That's, that explains that's that. That's why okay. there's no trees on the septic tank. I got some African basil. I now had, I planted uh, uh, garden beds over my septic tank. Yeah, I'm, go I'm going to start some stuff and probably do my like seedlings and stuff. Um, I had a shade house here. The hurricane blew it down. So I'm in, still in the process of cleaning that all up. But over here, I've got some pigeon pea. There's a small peanut butter fruit back here. You can see here. Yes, yes. Looking good. <laughs> peanut butter, um, pigeon pea. This is a little flower. I do. Now, it, what's up with there? The neighbors? Is nobody there? They're building, and that's another thing. This was solid woods. We didn't get any sun on this side of the yard for years and years. So now that the they've cleared that and they're getting ready to build a house, we get the afternoon sun. So all this stuff on this side is doing so much better, especially these mangoes and stuff. I've got a barbabas cherry and some more lemon. Like I said, this was my shade house and hurricane took her down. So I uh, moved everything over to that other area we were at first. Some pineapples. Pineapple. Or pineapple. Um, this is a chocanon mango. Chalk. Yep, chocanon. Chocanon. It's a Thai mango. How does that one do for you? This is the one that has two crops. Yeah. It's golden yellow, and it's very good. Didn't do real good last year. We probably had only like eight to ten fruit. The year before, we had a lot. We didn't have a good mango season last year. No. Ice cream did good last year. This is ice cream. M one of my favorite mangoes. Is it? Yes. <laughs> You got a good amount on here? Oh, yeah. And it's loaded. And you see how I did this one myself. <laughs> Ken was impressed. But I, it, see, it was low enough I could do this. So I've still been doing this one myself. And I really trimmed it up. And it was loaded last year. Such a great mango. Yes. Ice cream. It's a condo mango from Trinidad and Tobago. Yeah, you can keep those smaller. More African basil. And I keep all these around the trees for all the bees and all that stuff. Now, there's one back here we missed. I see a label there. What's that? This is an allspice. Okay. Allspice tree. Nice. We get to smell this. One of my favorite parts of doing this. I get to smell <laughs> before. Oh, so mm. beautiful. <laughs> this is one of my newer planters. Um, and kind of the same thing I'm, I did over there, over next to the shade tree. I put cardboard down in a section. Then I put mulch down, and then I just put some trees or some stuff. So I've got some African basil here, lemongrass, some pigeon peas, peanut butter tree. There's a little calamundin, Cuban oregano, some chaya, um, katuk, moringa. Longevity How often do you water this garden? Area? I don't. You know, they just grow. It's all natural. And you got an angel watching over it. Yep. <laughs> and then um, that's a Tommy Atkins. This and one? I, yes, and I know they're supposed to be <laughs> the bad mango, but 
I don't care. I make jam out of it. We eat them. So, we love them. like, did you, was that there or did you literally plant I literally there? picked it. And I kind of think it's, uh, it was because it's a childhood memory. That's the kind I had growing up. Got you, got you. <laughs> okay. And uh, does this get mangoes every year? Oh, yes. Yeah. Cranberry, hibiscus. This is a mystery. I can't tell you what it is. Um, it, it is growing better now that we're not, it's getting all the afternoon sun. And I also had my landscaper top this palm okay. and leave. I left it in place. I have two of them, the one next to the nut chuck. I just chopped them in place so that it'll disintegrate. And so it kind of gives. Now, you know, you can grow dragon fruit up that. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. And I got some to plant too. Dragon fruit <laughs> grows great up that. I do have some to plant. Wow. Wait, wait, we got to uh, come here and look at this. <laughs> this is a beautiful little sat, uh, area here. Yeah, we are on the wow. Martin County line. So once you cross this canal, you're in Martin County. So, wow. So the backyard. Now, does this canal have an overflow? Oh, yeah. It's, it yeah. <laughs> yes, it has. How high up does the water get? It'll go where you can't see. It's above that bank over there. And we're higher. So it takes longer. But it'll go straight across to where you don't see that road on that side. Wow. And it's probably coming up to, I'd say, about up to here. This line. Okay. So not too bad, but yeah, it does. I do have some bananas here. Actually, I am gonna plant back here because it's kind of wet. I gotta get in the ground. Okay. Here's an all summer mango I just put in the ground. I've got four or five new mangoes on this side. I'm just starting to do this area. I had a, a landscaper come out and get all my palms trimmed up, clean the underbrush. So I'm now gonna outline that outside. This pigeon pea here is doing wonderful. I love pigeon peas. That's something you can walk around and just have a little nibble. Yes, <laughs> yes. And eat. You're the making... kids like that. I love showing the grandkids this stuff. But here's the pigeon peas. <laughs> nice. Very good. You're making the best use of your property here. This is great. Um, I've got some more beauty berry. They look like sticks to everybody else, but I know they're beauty berries. <laughs> and by next year, they're going to be huge. Right here. My daughter makes the most beautiful jam out of those. So are your children into uh, plants and trees and things? Yeah, we have um, 10 acres up in Benelland in Citrus County. Okay. So she's starting to put the more pit stuff like the peaches, the plums, nice. the blueberries, and that kind of stuff that I can't grow here. And she's a jam maker, so she makes jam out of all this stuff. Wow. I'm, I had Ken put all my, as you can see, these are all when he cut my mangoes and all my trees. I had him put them here in a line as a buffer. It keeps my lawn man from cutting my plants, keeps kids from out there and everything else while my little plants go up. I'm just starting to do the back, so that's why I've got this here. We've got Mexican sunflower, we've got papaya, katook, moringa, beautyberry, aloe, all little things that are going to grow up. You'll probably by the end of the summer, this will look so different. I've got some little um, mulberries out here. Another mango. I don't know what it is. How'd you end up with a mango like These, that that you don't know? I've got four of them. And what happened was I brought them up to our property up north. My daughter put them in the ground. They were not doing good. It gets really cold up there. So we dug them back up and we planted them on this back 40. So I have no idea what any of these mangoes are. We'll okay. find out one day. <laughs> yeah. And I've got some everberry. Oh, this is funny. Okay, so when he cut, when Ken cut my... Red Mombin, I had them, like I said, put all this stuff up here as a barrier because I want to make um, a bunch of food stuff over here that nobody gets into. So these are from the Red Mombins. So he, he put them down here, and as you can see, they are growing. Isn't that funny? So I've got now Red Mombin plants growing up. Wow. <laughs> that now I, I hear something knocking on the tree. Yeah, the woodpecker. <laughs> Oh, we got woodpeckers. But okay. I put one of them up there in front of that wood pile. So as that wood pile decompresses, it'll fertilize it and it'll grow up nice. Um, here's a soursop. No, this is a 
That's that sapote you were talking about. White sapote. Yeah, there's a white sapote. Okay. And here's another sour sap. I just put it in, in 2021. It looks dead because of the yeah. rain. But when I show you the one out front that I put in from the Keys in 2015, it's like 10 feet tall. Oh, looking forward to seeing it. And okay. Yeah, that's out in front of the pond. And, and it gets I, a lot of sour sap? Huh? It gets sour sap? It has not yet. Okay. I'm hoping this year because wait till you see it. It's beautiful this year. Um, Katuk, peanut butter trees, Mexican sunflower. I'm just starting to put some stuff in here and get this growing up. And then we've got a couple more like pigeon pea, shampoo ginger, a little avocado, and another mystery mango. Mystery mango. Where's the <laughs> avocado? Right over here. Okay. What kind is that? Don't know. These are all mysteries. This whole row okay. is a mystery. But um, a little banana. I'm going to be planting more in here. I'd love to invite you back like in September. Um, because in September... When Jen said he wants to do a tour, I go, what's he going to tour? I've got star no, fruit. No, this is wonderful. i got star fruit. Uh, come back in no, no, we September see. when there's lechees and we mangoes will. We will, and avocados. But everyone loves seeing stuff like this. <laughs> so did we so finish around The only this place one? I think I, we haven't gone is out front where I can show you the... I have a big mulberry, a soursop, and a black sapote out there. Okay. Mulberry, soursop, and, and black, black sapote. sapote. I think we're almost done with the sweater. Oh, yeah, almost. <laughs> this is my column London I love. I, I come out here and, and pick these all the time, put them in water, drinks. My miracle tree, miracle fruit, more column London. Before we even built the house, I planted this gardenia. Oh, there's a gardenia right here. <laughs> wow. That was that was there before the house was there. <laughs> when we bought the land. Hi, Jen. Hey. We're pretty much done. I'm going to show them the black sapote. Okay. Okay. Hiding. You don't have to hide. <laughs> this is great. Thank you. All right. Uh, so here's the front of the house. Okay. This is chocolate pudding fruit or black sapote. And we started getting fruit about two or three years ago. And we average about 10 to 15 fruit. Nice big black sapote. Chocolate okay. pudding. Yes. And then the guanabana I was telling you about. This one is from the Keys. So the leaves are off because it's cold weather. This right is now, from Isla right? Morada. Wow. And look at this. I am I was looking at this. So many new to grow back. Yep. I have a feeling this is going to be a good year for this. And, and then, you haven't gotten fruit on that yet? Not yet. Nope. Nope. And, uh, we got our canistel fruit last year for the first time. And over in the corner is a mulberry. It's way down here. But um, the neighbor's oak tree is... I got to trim this too. Cut it off. But this oak tree, I think, is going to shade it out. Right here. There's the mulberry. Yep. Wonderful. And so, it's also dormant now because it's winter. The summer, that thing is beautifully green. And this is a long mulberry. So they're about that long and they're nice, bright red. So let me ask you. So I see you got this fence here. Uh -huh. It doesn't seem like you have a lot of foot traffic around here. No. no. So no problems with people taking no. it. Now, what about uh, critters like squirrels or raccoons? I'd share Eddie's? anyway. <laughs> uh, with the people or the critters? With the people. Okay. So critters what, I get mad at. <laughs> so what kind of critters do you get? Um, we get a lot of squirrels, a lot of birds. My husband feeds the birds too. Um, and I don't mind. Like yesterday I was out doing some work in the greenhouse area and sitting and I was watching a woodpecker up on the starfruit eating the nice bright orange starfruit. I've got 101 starfruit out there. So I don't care if a woodpecker eats one or two. Yes. <laughs> That's it's the great. mangoes. When they start eating my mangoes, it's time to cut them. It's, that's time to cut all your mangoes when you start losing a couple every day. What's this tree here behind you? Is that just that's a, an oak? Oak, okay. Beautiful oak, yeah. A small one. You didn't plant it, did you? No, I didn't plant this oak. And then on the other next to it is a um, red maple. Okay. Which, which in the in the summertime, this is absolutely gorgeous. Wow. Maple tree. We have a native cocoa plum right here, and this thing is. 
one of the first fruits I learned that you can eat if you're so out, this, stuck you, in the woods. So these you were here, when, Florida native. Yes, so this was here when you. When these you, were here, and my chickens love them. Yeah, they're delicious. Uh, I just found out. The, so the seed inside is edible, right? Yep. Wow. So it's edible fruit and edible seeds. That is great. And do you have any plans to plant other trees here and out here? Um, I've tried, believe it or not. I, I think my lawn man just comes and weeds them. I put Mexican sunflower all through the front. I've I've put stuff. The only thing I've really been able to hold on to is the, the, those two up in that corner in that mulberry. Um, well, that's great. Thank you for showing us around your place. You're welcome. All right, and we'll come back here and see I definitely you in want summertime. you to come down in the summer when it's Absolutely. full of flowers and fruits. <laughs> All right, everybody, another great uh, canvas that's been planted and it looks beautiful. All right. All right, everybody, that was it. What an amazing afternoon. And the weather here is just so beautiful today. It's not uh, extremely, extremely hot like it is in the summertime. We will come back in the summer to see some of the fruits on these trees. I'm not complaining. I love the heat. But I just love this place. Now, a couple of things I wanted to mention about this interview. This is the way this uh, lady decided to do her place. And she has that vision with the, with the sugarcane fence and all these things. That's what's so great about it. We can each have our own unique touches to our own houses, our own yards, and our own fruit, fruit forest. And uh, so she's doing it this way. And uh, she uh, has these all, all these mystery trees out here. And I'm not a big fan of mystery trees when you have a small space like this, because if you have a big space and you want to have fun and have mystery trees, that's great. But I want to know what I'm getting with the small space I have. And it's totally fine what she's done. She's leaving it up to, well, we'll figure it out one day. Uh, so uh, that's cool. And, uh, you know, there'll be something good, hopefully, that she'll enjoy. But she did have some really good avocados here, some excellent mangoes. The, the jackfruits look very, very exciting. The seedling jackfruits and and just everything here looks amazing. I look forward to coming back here in the summer and seeing what she's doing. But this is it. This is a forest. And as she said, if I would have came back here, you know, months ago, this whole place would have been shaded out because all the trees were super tall. But she just came and, and had Ken come here and do the uh, the trimming of the trees, which he did a great job. And that's, that's something that should be done every year or every two years to keep the trees smaller so they're not super big and then they get super small uh but she's got it going on here this place is wonderful and we will be back here let me know what you thought about this tour if you have any ideas for others but i like the way she planted everything and i like the way everything's growing and what amazes me is it's still very shady here it seems even though the sun's coming through a little but the trees are still growing you know she's been growing here 11 to 15 years and she lets the trees get their own water now you know even when they started she didn't but she's letting the trees get their own water even the jackfruit trees and she's getting jackfruit you know we can always do more she's not spraying her trees uh she's not watering her trees and she's getting what's suitable for her and that's just fine and remember it's not a commercial garden so it's much easier to just do what you want to do and have fun with it i always learn stuff when i'm on these type of tours and uh i learned a few things here today i'll talk about and apply in my own garden at another time. But until then, everybody, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and enjoy the videos, please subscribe to channels and, and give it a like. And until then, everybody, have a great day and keep growing.